Last year, when I started Seeds Indoors, I made some pretty rookie mistakes. So because of that, this year, I'm actually going to do a little bit more planning than I did last year. And I thought I'd take you along for my planning process. And along the way, I'll also explain all the things that I did wrong last year that I'm going to fix this year. So my name is Amy, and I'm from prettypurpledoor.com where I help home gardeners create landscapes that are uniquely you. So let's get started starting our seeds. The first step to starting seeds indoors is actually to decide where you're gonna put those seeds once you plant them outside. And I don't know why this wasn't super obvious to me, but I just started all these seeds and I didn't really think about where I was gonna put them once they were able to be transplanted outside. So this year I'm going to work out a space. So I have a walkway that I'm building and on either side of the walkway, I have um, six foot length beds. So I'm just using graph paper and I just marked off that two squares equals one foot. So every square is about six inches height and width. So. This little box here that I'm drawing would be six inches by six inches. And then I just drew um, a box that was three feet long by six feet wide. Then I put my walkway in and then I drew another one. So now I have a little uh, scaled plan to put my seeds into. The next step to starting seeds is to decide actually which seeds you want to plant. And you can do this by flipping through seed catalogs that you get in the mail. You can run to the nursery and look at the seed packs, or you can go online to one of the seed suppliers. So there's a few things that I look at when I'm deciding what I'm actually going to plant. Um, do I have the right conditions as far as uh, the amount of sun that that plant needs? Do I have uh, too much shade, sun shade? How much drainage does the plant need? Does it fit in my color scheme when it's going to bloom? What's its full height? What's the size? All of those things are things that I take into account when I'm flipping through these catalogs. So for this particular bed, I want to do uh, magentas and lime colors. So I'm going to flip through these catalogs and search a little bit online and I'll start marking off like plants that I think might work for that area. And then after that, make a note and write down the names of them, do a little bit more research and come up with a final list of plants to use. One thing that's important to note if you are looking at these seed catalogs is that they don't really have all of the information that you would need to make a decision about that particular plant. A lot of them will have the uh, full height and the full width of the plant, but they're not going to tell you um, how long it's going to take to germinate, when you should plant it, if you should plant indoors or outdoors and things like that. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll find a plant that I like in a seed catalog because I like flipping through them and then I'll go online and do some more research so I could get all of the other details that I need. The next thing that I want to do is figure out when I have to plant these in order to get them out into the garden so that they have the best chance to grow and bloom throughout the season. The first thing that I do is I look up my frost dates and you can go to just search on Google for Farmer's Almanac frost dates and it's going to give you a box that you could put in your city and state or your zip code and it'll spit out um, the spring frost date, your fall frost date, and the length of your growing season. So these are important dates. I do a lot of my planning now based on the spring frost date because this is the very last date that it's predicted by Farmer's Almanac that it will stop freezing under 32 degrees. That means that I can't put any of my little guys outside until all threat of the frost has passed, which means I have to start them indoors before this date based on how long they need to germinate. And this is like the biggest mistake that I made last year because I just started all these cosmos and zinnias and things and I had no thought in my mind, what am I going to do with them? I wasn't able to put them outside because my frost date hadn't passed yet and it was still too cold. So they ended up getting leggy and I was trying to care for them inside when there was really no reason for that. So because of that, this year I made a little worksheet and I'm going to work through this worksheet so I don't have to worry about having these indoors way beyond the time that they should be already outside. So now I have all of the seats that I want to start written on this little worksheet. And the next step is to kind of determine 
whether I need to sow them indoors or outdoors, uh, what date I should sow them on and what date they're gonna bloom on um, and how much spacing they need in between each plant. And I'll put any other notes about each plant here. I'm just gonna show you on here um, here's Scabiosa drumsticks, and this is one of the seeds that I'm going to be starting. And on the back of the packet, usually all this information is available to you. So it's going to tell you the light requirements, the soil requirements, and the mature size of the plant. It will also tell you when it flowers, how long it takes from seed to bloom, which is super important, and um, whether you should sow. It'll give you instructions for outdoor versus indoor, and usually it'll either say recommended next to the indoor or the outdoor. So I always follow this because I'm not super advanced at seed starting. So this one says it's recommended to start indoors except in longer growing seasons, and it says to start indoors four to six weeks before last frost. So you see here that that frost date is super important because I need to start this four to six weeks before that. So I'm just going to start filling in this information. So I'm definitely going to do this one indoors and then I have to start it four to six weeks before. So I'm going to put four to six weeks and it said seed to bloom will be 16 weeks. And then the spacing that's also located on the packet here where it says final spacing nine to 15 inches. So let's just take something in between that. I'm just gonna put 12 inches. And any other notes that I need, I'm just gonna put the heights because I want to make sure that I have varying heights in my garden space. Okay, so once you have this information, I'm gonna fill it out for all of the rest of these. And then we're gonna get into how to determine what four to six weeks is so that we can get actual dates in here. Now that I have all of the information I need, I'm gonna grab a calendar. This is actually a calendar from last year. It doesn't matter. You just have to count by the weeks. So I'm gonna take my spring frost date, which is May 2nd, and I'm gonna use this date to count back so I know when to sow these. So first I have to, I have to decide if I'm gonna sow them four weeks before or six weeks before. And then I have to decide based on that, what the date that it'll be. And so then I'll know when I have to actually put them in their little seed pots. So for May 2nd, let's just do five weeks. So I'll put a little five here, and this is the same here, because it could be four to five, and this is four to six. So we're gonna choose five here, and the same here. So we're gonna pick five. So that way, these three, I can start on the same day. So we'll just count back five weeks from May 2nd. One, two, three, four, five. So March 28th would be that day, March 28th. And same for this, March 28th, and same here, March 28th. The next is this bloom time, and this will be the seed to bloom amount of weeks. So now that I know March 28th is the day I'm going to sow these, I can count 16 weeks ahead for these. So I know what day or around when these are going to start blooming in my garden. So I need to count 16 weeks from March 28th. Okay, so this is 16 weeks on July 18th. So I can expect that my scabiosa will start blooming in July. So that way I'm not worried. Last year it was May and I was like, how come these aren't looking good yet? Because, well, because I'm silly and I, <laughs> I didn't count and I had no idea when they were actually supposed to be blooming. And then it, it kind of disappointed me because I thought that they would be out a lot earlier than they actually were. So same thing here, we're gonna go for the cosmos, we're gonna go to March 28th, and then we're gonna count between 10 and 12 weeks. Let's do 12 weeks. So if I get my cosmos into their pots on March 28th, I should expect to have them blooming in my garden on June 20th, which what a great thing to know. So again, I'm just gonna fill out the rest of these so that I know about when they're gonna start blooming and when I need to put them into the ground. And from there, we'll move on to organizing them within our garden plan. Next is to figure out how many of each I need to plant based on these spacing amounts that I put 
together. So my Scabiosa drumsticks and Black Knight and Rudbeckias are all 12 inch spacing. Remember we had every block is six inches. So something like this would be a 12 inch spacing. So I can't put them any closer than that. So I just want to get an idea of how many plants I can actually fit. The zinnias are two and a half feet. So maybe I should put these in first since they're the largest of the plants. So let me start with the zinnias and see how many I can fit. If I need two and a half feet, that would be one foot, two foot and a half. So already one foot, two and a half. So this right here would be a zinnia. So maybe I can cheat a little bit. Okay, so I might wanna put them back there so I can fit another one foot plant in front of them. So we'll put these further into the back. And this is very, very uh, common for me where I'll erase a lot. So this big one here, this is a zinnia here. And I'll put a big Z. I'm just going to speed up this part of the video so that it doesn't get too long on you. But if you are interested in seeing this process, let me know in the comments below and I can post it in a new video. So this is actually the amount of seeds I need, which isn't a lot, you know, for such a large area six by three, I don't need too many. So what I typically do at this point is I account for what's not gonna germinate because I'm not that good at starting seeds yet. So I've heard numbers from anywhere from 20% to 50% just to be safe. So, and I'm not that good at starting from seed yet. I might account for 50% failure rate. So I'm just gonna basically double all of these numbers to make sure that I have enough to fill this bed. So that's the process and that's how I determine where I'm gonna put them, how many I need. I think I'm in a lot better shape than I was last year already. You might be wondering, how do I start them? How deep do I plant them? What do I need? So all of that information is typically on the backs of the packets. So this one here uh, for the Rudbeckia, it says cover with plastic to retain moisture while the seeds germinate. So it gives you like really specific instructions. And if you don't have this information on your packets, which all of mine do, even from different suppliers, you could always go online. Johnny Seeds is a really good resource for that where you can get all of the information that you'll need. So the next step is to either order these seeds if you don't have them yet, and then run to the garden center and grab some seed starting mix. Um, you need your trays, you'll need lights for indoors if you don't have them. And beyond that, once they start sprouting and they get to the point where your spring frost date has passed, I check the weather for the next week or so and make sure, just make sure because that's just an estimated date. So it's not 100% guaranteed that it won't frost after that. And then once I see that it's going to be above 32 for that entire week, that's when I start hardening off the plants. So you take your seed tray outside on day one for about an hour. So basically you're just going to get your little plants used to the outdoor weather. You can't just throw them outside and hope that they survive because they're used to indoor temperatures. So usually I do that for five days. So day one, I'll do an hour, then the next day I'll do two or three hours and so on and so forth for about five days. Once I get to that five day point, these little guys should be good to go. And then I'll plant them according to my little drawing here and I'll get them in the ground and then I'll just watch them and take care of them. Other than that, I just tell myself and I'm telling you that you need to save these seed packets. Even if there's no seeds in them, I save them anyway because this information is super duper helpful. And also I found that it's actually really helpful for collecting seeds. So at the end of the year, a lot of these plants, you can, you can save the seeds from the plants that you just grew. So you don't have to buy them again the next year, which is amazing, right? You don't have to buy them. So you can just throw your seeds from this year's plant into your packaging. And I'd love to hear any of your seed starting successes and failures. I'm fairly new at this, so maybe we can learn from each other in the comments. I'll see you over in the next video.